I be that young rapping dude, might just trap with you. Coming with the thunder, baby, might just snap it through. I roll out in the morning light with that Harley bike, all black. I'm the party type, and it's on tonight. I just step to no weapons, but my outfit might take the soul. See my presence impressive, got strippers slipping off the poles. I just whip, then I swerve them. Wish you would, I'm Timmy Turner, turned her to a carnivore. Now she treat me like a burger. I don't know their names, but they all wanna ride. All this energy around me, I feel so alive. This must be the vibe, this must be the vibe. This must be the vibe, cause I feel so alive. I don't know their names, but they all wanna ride. All this energy around me, I feel so alive. This must be the vibe, this must be the vibe. This must be the vibe, cause. Hey what's up guys, Darkworker here and for today's video we are playing Yawn on the newest patch. There was a hotfix which got implemented recently and because of that hotfix Yawn is much stronger right now. And we are also going to play a solo rank game using the green enchantment on Yawn. It's going to be pretty awesome and besides that Yawn got a pretty I would say they call it adjustment, but I would say it's overall a pretty significant buff. So for the passive, there were a lot of changes. The physical damage changed from 0.24 AD per hit to basically in the late game you will have a uh, 0.43. So almost double the amount of AD uh, per hit in the late game. So it's yeah, his passive basically does double damage on physical damage part and for the true damage part they changed that the 1% uh, of target's maximum HP cannot critically hit anymore. Before you could do critical damage on the true damage part but the true damage part can't crit anymore. So against tanks you will do less damage overall because it's 1% of target's maximum HP but against um, squishy heroes where you can do a lot of damage just with your Muramasa your Muramasa will just pierce through them double the amount of AD in the late game 0.24 and late game 0.43 so it's a pretty um, significant buff in my opinion and also there are new roots for archers let me um, yeah, let me read it out for you guys. We will gradually unify the crit roots for archers, hoping to solve the problem of some archers' overly high late damage output. They are talking about uh, Kefani, uh, Elandor, and stuff like that. People who have a lot of AD scaling and their crit will do just way too much damage. And also make our crit roots easier for players to understand. Generally speaking, first, for single enhanced normal attack with AD bonus less than 1.0 will fully uh, fully critical hit. So for Yawn it means everything he does on the passive will crit for sure 100% uh, of the damage. So for the second point it's for a single enhanced normal attack with AD greater than 1.0 only the 1.0 AD part can be critically hit. So any other AD bonus AD that would normally crit doesn't crit anymore and just the 1.0 AD part which doesn't matter for Yawn. So other ADs like Kefni, their damage output is getting nerfed in the late game but for Yawn it doesn't matter because his AD scaling is just 0.43 in the late game for the passive and the passive is where most of Yawn's damage comes from. And like I said, the moment you have Muramasa it doesn't matter you will still shred through tanks, you don't necessarily need the 1% targets maximum HP to crit. I know it's true damage, but for squishy targets it doesn't matter. And if you have Muramasa, you will still shred through tanks, so that's pretty awesome. And for Yon, he is a pretty simple to play hero, uh, very beginner friendly, just his positioning is really important. You always want to keep three stacks up, uh, use three auto attacks in the air 
or onto opponents or onto minions so that you activate the passive and then you just press the auto attack and you will shoot a barrage of passive auto attacks which does a lot of damage uh, you can also whenever you use a skill activate the passive so you most of the times you try to have passives up before a fight like i'm doing right now uh, doing just auto attacks in the air using um, minion button or just the auto attack button shoot your arrows onto the opponents using the passive then use s2 to reset your passive and then you can use the s1 to um, root the opponents in one place that's really important good targeting on the s1 to root them in one place so they don't get too close to you positioning is key on your own and you can basically activate non-stop your passive using your skills auto attacks of course three auto attacks will get your passive then you can use another ability to recast your passive and then another ability to recast your passive again so that's basically how yawn works and you can also snipe opponents with your ultimate the ultimate cooldown is really low so you can use it um, as a tool to poke the opponents or also to just uh, finish opponents off or to just get your passive up again it's just like i said really important for you to get the passive up again and actually i think i have six games on yawn right now and i actually won every game surprisingly i played like most of those games in solo queue and yawn is surprisingly really good in solo queue because of his late game damage if they don't have assassins and you have a good uh, support peeler then in the late game your damage output is absolutely crazy you just need to have one good fight you have red buff one good fight one good positioning um, in the team fight and then you will just absolutely carry so we sniped him off we have really good positioning right now we are look at our positioning no one is focusing us we can just freely attack we just came from behind i think we have a quad kill already right here the Crixie is of course running away doesn't give us the penta kill or mega kill unfortunately but overall still a great fight we were super behind before this fight um 3 8 yeah no 3 7 before this fight i would say super behind the enemy jungler was pretty ahead but now comeback potential and i'm feeling super strong already got a quad kill the moment you get your core items you will do just so much damage three items use the s1 quickly but he flickers out of the s1 well played by omen because of his flicker out he doesn't get rooted by ms1 and he managed to escape and like i said three core items a uh, clave slicks a bow you will do so much damage and the moment you have muramasa no matter how much armor they have you will do tons of damage you have true damage and then your passive double damage compared to before so your passive absolutely crazy the moment you have muramasa it doesn't matter how much armor they stack muramasa is just such a broken item okay let's see if i can reach fennec unfortunately he survives he managed to dodge my passive by using his dash just sniping into the bush seeing whether or not i can maybe get a free kill but he managed to survive he's super low life i'll just clear the wave right here and probably go for a red buff i guess yeah our wonder woman is pushing the bot lane i really need this red buff right now the red buff on yawn super important and yeah someone needs to split push bot lane and we go four men trying to force the last remaining tier one tower meanwhile fennec is going for dragon up i clear this wave and then i will rotate to the top lane so we can force the last tower the last tier one tower and i always tell you guys obje objective game getting towers super important just to create more pressure on the map more freedom for you and we are also already going for 
Astro Spear for more armor penetration and look at our damage onto this Varus. She just gets obliterated by our damage. It's crazy. And we might be able, yeah, we can go for Slayer right now. Uh, Varus is dead. Fennec is pushing the bot lane. So it's a free Slayer for us. So it doesn't matter if we lose maybe one tower. I think with the Slayer buff we will be able to take a lot of towers and the pressure that the Slayer creates is obviously really good as well. Okay, at the same time, um, yeah, Fennec and Omen killed our Wonder Woman. And to be honest, this was int. I didn't expect. I saw. I saw in the mini, I saw Fennec 20% HP, I'm like, okay, it's a free kill, no problem, I just, um, I just go right into him, trying to kill him, and then he activates Bow of Slaughter, and we just get destroyed, and that was actually, um, well played by Fennec, I totally didn't expect him to have Bow of Slaughter already, I should have checked, and that's why it's really important for you guys to always pay attention to the items of the opponents, check whether or not they have Deathsicle, Bow of Slaughter, Hercules and stuff like that to know whether or not they can cheese you and they are just baiting you. And I got totally baited by Fennec, didn't expect him to have Bow of Slaughter. I was full life, he was 20% HP, he activates Bow of Slaughter and he just destroys us. So, have to play it more safe, I was too cocky right there, um, too confident knowing that I can just burst him, but yeah, we got countered. And let's snipe him, get the clean snipe. We got our revenge right here, getting a kill onto Fennec and getting double buff back. So, not too shabby. And right now I'm just pinging, guys, follow me, protect the ADC, protect me. I'm going to carry this, I'm the damage dealer. Look at our damage. Our damage is crazy, snipe him off and he dies, another snipe, that's what I mean. The ultimate is really great to finish off people that are trying to escape. Getting the tower, let's go, and uh, maybe we can try to force the tier 3 tower. Fennec uses ultimate onto the wave, so I don't think we can do it anymore. He also cleans the dragon, so that's not in our favor we actually wanted to get the tier 3 tower but Phoenix ultimate prevented that okay let's get dragon and then get the bird for more vision and i'll probably go for red buff afterwards getting red buff dark slayer is going to spawn in 25 seconds so obviously we will try to get this dark slayer again to push the last tier 2 tower which is in the mid lane Tier 2 tower in the mid lane is really important, it gives a lot of control and vision for the team and if we kill it we will have a lot more pressure on the map and a lot more freedom because it will prevent the opponents to retreat to their safety point which is the tier 2 mid tower and it will make it easier for us to trap around the tier 2 mid tower as well. Because it gives vision, it gives vision, so if you're trying to trap in the bush, they might see it if they still have the tier 2 mid tower up. Just poking here, doing a lot of damage. And now I'm like, okay, let's be a little bit careful, don't be in range of Mina Flicker ultimate, because that would be our doom. A good Mina Flicker ultimate will just destroy us, so we have to play it a little bit more safe. And this Fennec was actually camping in this bush. Not, not bad by him. Not trying to kill him. Ultimate. And I actually missed the ultimate. He managed to survive. That's super unlucky. Should have. I'm not sure whether or not he would, uh, would have died from the ultimate. But if I hit the ultimate better, there was a chance to maybe kill him. I'm. I see the Wonder Woman is pushing the uh, top lane right now, so I put the dragon in the bot lane to create a big wave. And with the big wave, it's pretty easy to create.
create enough pressure on the side lane so that we can also force at the same time the mid tower. So we have pressure from our super minions at the top lane, pressure from the dragon in the bot lane. So if we shove the waves, the mid and bot wave at the same time into the towers, we might be even able to take both towers at the same time. So it's really important for us to do good wave management, to push all the waves at the same time into the base or into the towers, just so that we can create enough pressure to take the towers. So they have to split the, the focus. One has to defend top lane, maybe two have to defend the mid lane and uh, two others have to defend bot lane. And that's usually why you do a lot of pressure on all waves. Um, push them at the same time so they split their defense and it's easier for us to take the towers. And yeah, like I said, the Sinestra is just, um, I think she's 2-6 and it's pretty obvious because she just always runs alone, doesn't try to run with the team and if you are already behind then you shouldn't split push, you should try to, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, okay, clear the wave but then immediately join the fight, join the team, move S5, especially if you are behind, your split push is weak and you don't really have enough pressure to push one person in or force two people onto your lane, which is the key in split pushing. If you create so much pressure that one person can't defend it alone and they need to put two people into your lane and then it opens up the defense on the map so that the other four people can push the other lanes. That's the whole point of split pushing. For example, Omen is too strong for Richter in the late game to handle alone. They have to put two people so that they can defend the wave. And that's basically split pushing, create enough pressure so that your teammates have less people that are defending and then you can just uh, push the other towers in the other lanes. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay of us playing Yon Solo rank with the green enchantment. Um, and Yon news patch, I would say he is super strong. I played him like six times now and I didn't lose one game yet. And he is an absolute beast in this patch. Super strong, try it out for yourself. And trust me, um, yeah, you just need a good support, uh, support and it's going to work like a chart. So if you guys enjoyed this gameplay, then leave a like, subscribe. I see you next time. Bye bye. Have an awesome day. Quad kill. Let's go.